finally, a look at apple cider vinegar for different groups of people. So now we know how apple cider vinegar interacts with different metabolic situations. This is fascinating because it's not just one blanket group of people anymore. Let's dive into this very interesting paper and then we'll decide what you can add to your apple cider vinegar to further enhance the potential metabolic outcome. There is a link down below for 30% off your grocery order through Thrive Market. If you're someone that's watching carbohydrates, it's probably one of the best places for you to find good foods that are still within that category because you can go to Thrive Market, you can sort by gluten-free, you can sort by sugar-free, you can really sort by foods that are lower carb or keto-friendly, really makes it easy. I mean, imagine going into a grocery store and being able to like check a box that eliminates things with gluten, then check another box that eliminates things that have sugar. I mean, it's like you're removing things that don't matter for you at the grocery store and you're left with exactly what would work for you. It is super cool. And again, because you're watching my videos, that is a 30% off discount link for your entire grocery order. And you get a free gift worth up to $50 when you use that link. So check them out after this video and a big thank you for the continued support on this channel to Thrive Market. So fascinating study published in the journal Diabetes Care took a look at eight subjects that were insulin sensitive, 11 subjects that were insulin resistant, and 10 subjects that had type 2 diabetes. So all the way past insulin resistance to being diabetic. Okay, what they did is they gave them 20 grams of apple cider vinegar or a placebo. Okay, so no one knew what they got, right? Apple cider vinegar or placebo. And then they had them consume a high carb meal. Fascinating results. Okay, they found the insulin resistant group, 60 minutes, one hour after consuming the high carb meal, had a 34% increase in their insulin sensitivity. Okay, the diabetic group had a 19% increase in their insulin sensitivity. What am I getting at here? Why are these numbers different? What this tells us is that apple cider vinegar and the acetic acid and sort of the just the acidic nature of it has a more powerful effect on people that are not all the way insulin resistant or not all the way diabetic but are in that kind of gray area which is a lot of people once you get so far to being diabetic the apple cider vinegar can obviously still help a 19 percent improvement but it's much more difficult because the insulin resistance is so significant that it doesn't matter how much you delay carbohydrate absorption, things like that. So I guess we have to understand why apple cider vinegar is so beneficial to be able to understand what's going on. The main hypothesis behind why this occurred is simply that apple cider vinegar affects salivary amylase and it affects how quickly carbohydrates absorb. Okay, so vinegar along with a meal, a high carb meal, slows the absorption essentially. It slows the breakdown of disaccharides into monosaccharides and ultimately just to absorption. So that means that in someone that is insulin resistant, it gives their body an opportunity to catch up. It's going slow enough that an insulin resistant individual can still deal with it, but not slow enough that a type two diabetic can deal with it as well. That doesn't mean if you're type two diabetic, you should not concern yourself with apple cider vinegar. 19% is still significant, but insulin resistance at 34% that's a really significant improvement. But there's some other things that we might be able to do to potentially help out even more. So when you look at turmeric, for example, okay, curcumin is very interesting because there's some documentation that curcumin might activate what's called AMPK. AMPK is the energy sensor within the body. Okay, so that energy sensor is going to say, okay, we need to increase the amount of fuel going into the cell because energy demand is high. So if you have something like turmeric with your apple cider vinegar, it might increase the ability of glucose to get into the cell. Another thing that we could potentially add is even some fresh ginger. Now, you might be wondering, can I do this in a fasted state? Yeah, you probably could. Maybe just juice a little bit of ginger, use some fresh ginger juice, because the research here, even though it's from in vitro studies in a Petri dish, it's fascinating stuff. There was a study that was published in the journal uh, Planta Medica that looked at gingerols, which are components of ginger, and how they affected cells. They found that gingerols seem to increase the number of surface level GLUT4 receptors. So if you have a cell that has maybe two GLUT4 receptors, 
it's not going to catch a whole lot of glucose because that is like the net to catch the glucose. But if you have a cell that has 20 of them, it's going to catch a lot more glucose. So hypothetically, based upon this in vitro research, not been done in humans or even rodent models yet, still interesting though, we see that, oh, well, there's more GLUT4 receptors on the surface of a cell. A small risk to try it out, right? It's definitely not going to hurt anything. There's what, like a half a calorie and a little bit of ginger juice? So maybe a tablespoon of ginger juice or less, along with two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and maybe a dash of curcumin or turmeric along with it. That could be a nice little cocktail to mix up based upon the research. No guarantees, no promises, but very fascinating, especially if you're someone that is really walking that line of insulin resistance prior to type 2 diabetes. Remember, I'm not a doctor. I just read the research and articulate it well, but thought that this would be interesting. As always, I'll see you tomorrow.